One of the most spectacular animal-built structures on the planet is the mound built by the termite Macrotermes. This structure serves as an external lung for the underground colony. But how do the million or so termites that live in the colony know how to build such a sophisticated structure? Well, that's still a mystery. But at the most fundamental level, it involves termites moving daubs of soil one at a time from one place to another. That all has to start somewhere. In this video, we see how termites decide where and when to start building. Let's begin with termites in the simplest imaginable circumstance, a petri dish with an arena of featureless damp soil. What will happen? For minutes, the termites just mill around, exploring their surroundings. The first notable event is a termite here that begins to drink from the soil. Note the location, that will be important later. At three and a half minutes, the drinking termite is still at it while the others are still exploring. At just under five minutes, another termite joins the first and also begins to drink. Finally, at about six minutes in, the first drinking termite has had enough. He's been at it for almost five minutes. At about seven and a half minutes, a termite returns to this patch. It's not drinking, it's doing something else. And about 30 seconds later, we see what? The termite has excavated a little patch. Look carefully, let's see this again. At twelve and a half minutes, we see the first soil deposition. Watch the termite in the red circle. It's doing something at the edge. After a bit of wandering, we see what it was doing. It's gathered some soil and laid it down as a tiny dollop. Let's watch that again. At thirteen and a half minutes, we see some action at the location where the first termite began drinking, in the red circle. First there's two, then three. Fifteen minutes in, and the original site has become a cooperative digging site. An additional site has also emerged. And by 18 minutes, two more sites have emerged, all along the edge, making four in all. In the dish paved with only damp clay, building began at the place where a termite had roughened the surface. Is it a texture, then, that initiates building? We can test this by putting termites into a dish with smooth clay, but roughened with the toothpick in four places. Will termites initiate building on these rough patches? As before, the termites spend a lot of time exploring the dish. At about 15 minutes in, the first dollop of clay is deposited here, right next to where it was dug out. The second dollop is deposited here, about three minutes later. And finally, after about 23 minutes, a site of cooperative digging has emerged, which becomes self-perpetuating. Let's compare the roughened patches when the termites were introduced and after 28 minutes. We see there's no difference. So it seems the texture is not what initiates building. We do learn something interesting about what does initiate it, though. Let's follow the termite that laid down that first dollop of soil. Let's look at the whole sequence sped up to 15 times normal speed. Here's the termite that laid down that first dollop, here. We'll mark this with an A and track his movements over the next several minutes. A short time later, it's this termite that lays down the second dollop, here. We'll mark this with a B. At about two and a half minutes, the termite stops and does something here, at point C. Note how after the termite leaves, several other termites come to investigate. Just after three minutes, the termite does the same here, at point D. He spends nearly a minute there. Then, at about four and a half minutes, the termite picks up the first dollop from A and transports it across the dish to redeposit it here. Again, note how several other termites gather around the relocated dollop to investigate. After a time, the termite returns to the relocated dollop. Eventually, it comes back to the site D. This is where the site of cooperative digging will emerge. If it's not texture, what about water? We'll test this by putting termites into a dish paved with dry clay. We add a couple of drops of water and watch what the termites do. After about three minutes, several termites have congregated on the damp patch. Water definitely interests them. 
After about five minutes, a termite comes to a patch where another has been drinking and tries to dig, but without success. The first dollop is laid down after eight minutes, this time by a minor worker, here. In the uniformly damp pavement, it took about twice as long for this to happen. By ten minutes, we see that cooperative digging has begun. There's even a dollop that has been translocated across the dish. So water clearly interests them. Let's give them a very wet patch, five times as much water as the first one. We see there's immediate interest. Within 30 seconds, quite a number of termites have congregated on the new wet patch. And within two minutes, we see the first dollop deposited here. But for the first few minutes, termites mostly drink from the new source of water. After about six minutes, digging commences at the new patch. It seems the termites need to tank up before they dig. By ten minutes, cooperative digging is fully underway. Remember, it took about twenty minutes in the uniformly damp dish for this to happen. What happens if we give the termites a simultaneous choice between a damp patch and a patch on the right that is about three times wetter? The termites very quickly begin to investigate the wetter patch. Notice how this one is exploring the patch's edge. But they're also investigating the damp patch. By about three minutes, most of the termites are congregating on the wetter patch. After about five minutes, we see the first digging by this termite, here. This termite keeps digging, laying down his second dollop here. Other termites come in to investigate it. At six and a half minutes, another site of digging emerges. And at a little more than seven minutes, a termite continues to dig at the first site. This time, the termite takes the soil and places it as a dollop off on the dry patch. At eight minutes, this same termite digs out another patch and puts it down as a dollop here. About 30 seconds later, a site of cooperative digging begins to emerge here. By nine minutes, though, the termites have drifted away from this patch, but just off to the right we see something interesting. Notice this damp patch along the edge. This is from a termite, apparently well hydrated, that is systematically extruding water, moistening the otherwise dry soil. If we move the dish back slightly, we see they've been busy extending the damp patch to the edge there as well. This is capturing an important part of these termites' water economy. They move water from wet areas to drier areas. Finally, after about 15 minutes, there's vigorous cooperative building at the wetter patch, near where it had begun and faded away several minutes earlier. There's something interesting going on here. Let's look a little closer still. We know that water is important to termites' building behavior. As we see here, termites liquefy soil they are molding with water from the crop. We can follow what the termites do with water by letting them imbibe a little fluorescein dye from wet soil. Under a UV light, fluorescein glows bright green. The dye is non-toxic. Look how a termite laying down a dollop of soil leaves behind a green trace. That termite has added water from its crop to its new build. Look also how the termite leaves behind a glowing drop of water beside it to mark the spot. We also see that water is sometimes left behind after a social interaction, such as between these two termites, one of which is being groomed by the other. Note the damp green patch left behind, which immediately attracts the attention of a minor worker. There's something attractive in there. Termites also appear to often just leave a drop of water behind, as seen here. In some cases, there appear to be termites that do a lot of this, leaving multiple tiny drops of water at several locations. Here. 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 And here. After returning to the source to get more water, it even comes back to dollops laid down previously and adds a drop to them. Here. And here. If that water contains cement pheromone, this marks the very beginning of stigmergic building. To recap, here is what we have learned. 
First, in a featureless environment, the initiation of building takes about 20 minutes. In a petri dish, this seems to start at an edge. Second, initiation of building is facilitated somehow by water. When soil is patchily wet, termites congregate on wet patches and tend to initiate building there. This is a faster process, requiring only about half the time it takes when the environment is homogeneously damp. And finally, once building is initiated, it tends to be self-perpetuating, although sites of cooperative digging can be abandoned for a time. Only one strongly motivated termite is needed to get building started, and this may involve leaving a waterborne attractant on newly deposited build, for refreshing dollops of soil laid down earlier, and for signposting an area with numerous and scattered drops of water.